I recently raced at Leeds Triathlon in the age group British Championships for standard distance and although I raced well, I wanted to race faster. I was wearing a Super Sapiens glucose monitor at the time and wondered if I could delve into the data to find ways to improve my nutrition and through that, improve my performance. Now, if you're new here, my name's James and I'm a sport nutritionist and race triathlons too. I had heaps of fun racing in Leeds and for me, I did pretty well. These were my overall results and I was happy with how I placed considering it was the British Championships. I felt strong throughout and I was pleased with my pacing. But as normal after a race, I found myself going through different parts and thinking, what could I do to be able to race faster? Other than, you know, getting a new pair of legs or putting a motor in my wheels. Now, some of you may already be familiar with Super Sapiens, but if not, they're a company that provide the infrastructure for athletes to use continuous glucose monitors. Essentially, a little sensor in your skin that monitors your blood glucose levels, records it, and then sends it to your phone. By the way, I am not sponsored or affiliated with Super Sapiens, and I bought the products with my own money. So. Don't worry, this is not a push for them. The idea behind blood glucose levels in sport is that to perform at your best, you don't want big peaks and troughs in your blood glucose because that might suggest inadequate fueling, which could lead to both mental and physical issues during racing. By adequately fueling your racing, you can keep your blood sugar in a more stable range and avoid the highs and lows. Now, this was my Super Sapiens data from my race and you can see the swim, bike and run sections here. By the way, this big gap was a bloody massive T1. It took me over seven minutes, seven minutes. Now, as you can probably tell, I had this initial increase in my blood glucose and then a general downwards trend over the race. I started in what's called my glucose performance zone, which is where the line is red. And by by the end of the run, I was almost completely out of it as indicated by the blue line. Had I fueled better or differently, I may have been able to keep my blood sugar level constant throughout the race and then finish stronger. And this is what I was so keen to explore. But before we go further, I'm curious to know what you thought my nutrition plan might have been. Do you think I took any nutrition on board before the race and then anything during the race? If I did, how much at each point. Now, you don't have to tell me and you can just keep it all in your head, but if you're feeling adventurous, then go ahead and put your thoughts in the comments section and see if you were right. So let's start with pre-race nutrition. I've recently did a video on whether you should consume carbs in the hours before your race, and my conclusion was that if you can tolerate carbs before a race, then you probably should consume them if your race is over 90 minutes long. I also said that you needed to experiment and find out what works for you, and this is something that I had been trying before my race in my training sessions. I wanted to take a gel before I raced, and so in the eight weeks or so, in the lead up to it, I was testing the effect of taking a gel at different time points before I started exercising. I also tracked how each session felt and whether I accurately predicted what my glucose levels were doing when I started exercise. The long and short of this is that I couldn't feel much in the way of difference of when I consumed carbohydrates, but my natural preference seemed to be to have a gel much closer to starting exercise. I ended up doing this for my race and I took a Morton CAF 100 gel about 50 minutes before my start time. As you can see here from my glucose curve, it seemed to be getting absorbed into my blood as I was swimming, which was the aim. Super Sapiens gave me a big old 100 out of 100 score for my swim leg. And to be honest, I had a great swim, doing it in 23.47 and feeling really comfortable. So I think that part was pretty successful by all accounts. Now onto the bike leg, which was 40K as an Olympic distance try. So you can see this general downward trend of my glucose readings without any significant changes. You might think by looking at this that I didn't consume anything during my bike, but I actually had a Morton 320 mix in 500 milliliters of water. One of those mixes is 80 grams of carbs, so a decent amount. And I drank it in three gulps, about five minutes in, 
20 minutes in and 40 minutes in. For the bike leg, Super Sapiens gave me a score of 60 out of 100. Although I was in my glucose performance zone, I lost points for having a downward trend and what they classify as a drop in blood glucose. So potential room for improvement there, according to Super Sapiens. So onto the run, and you can see my glucose reading continue to decline before it picks up a little bit at the end. And here I got a score out of 34 out of 100. Aww. Which definitely isn't optimum for performing as well as possible according to Super Sapiens. Now about 5 minutes into my run I had a Morton 100 gel but again you don't really see any noticeable impact of that on my glucose readings especially in comparison to when I've had that at other times. So the big question here really is how my nutrition and my glucose readings tie in together and what I can learn from this. If we just look at this at face value then there's probably two outcomes. One is that I didn't take enough nutrition on board, or two, it's totally useless because my glucose readings have no relation to my nutrition or my performance. <laughs> I mean, I do wonder if it is actually number two, but I think we can still analyze it a bit. So let's go through number one and whether I didn't take enough nutrition on board and so needed more. I can be pretty confident here that I don't want to take any more nutrition on board. 25 grams of carbs just before the race, followed by 80 grams of carbs over an hour on the bike, followed by another 25 grams of carbs is definitely sufficient for a 215 Olympic try and was already pushing me to my limits. The only thing that I would potentially consider is increasing my pre-race intake to something like 50 grams of carbs instead of 25. However, I think if I tried more then I would just end up with tummy upset as a result of taking too much on or at least run a much higher risk of that but with diminishing returns in terms of performance. But this does raise a good question. Did I actually absorb all the nutrition or was it just left in my gut and therefore that's why I didn't get any changes in my blood sugar? Well, in terms of actual performance, I think I raced well and I didn't get any GI upset. I didn't feel like I bonked and my pacing doesn't show that. And I've been practicing my race nutrition with Morton products for weeks. So I think overall that's unlikely. I suspect there are actually a combination of factors as to why my blood sugar didn't really react to the carbs that I took on, with the main one being simply the fact that I was exercising. We know that blood sugar spikes are less likely to happen during exercise, especially during sustained moderate to hard efforts. Given I was trying pretty hard for the whole thing, it probably reduced the impact of visually seeing the effects of the carbohydrates that I consume. Where the sensor is placed might also make a difference. It's in the top layer of your skin and measures the glucose level in your interstitial fluid. There can be differences between this reading and your capillary blood glucose reading like you would take from your finger. And these differences are more pronounced around times of rapid change of blood sugar levels or during exercise, so this could definitely play into it. As well as that, when your sensor isn't connected to your phone, it will record an average every 15 minutes rather than every minute, which means it actually might miss more acute changes. These are just some blood glucose changes, which happen very rapidly, and an average reading every 15 minutes wouldn't show the data in the same way. And of course, my sensor could have been faulty too, but it had been giving me reliable readings up until that point, so we'll discount that one. The difficulty with all of this is that I can't really replicate my race in the same way to see if the results were different depending on what I consume. I can't just replay the race and take more carbs. I have got another race later in the year which I'll use a monitor for and we'll see what the results are and compare them, but otherwise it's quite difficult to interpret as an isolated event. I can keep practicing and refining things at home which is actually what I have been doing and Probably that's the biggest takeaway for this. Whilst I'm not sure the data from my race has made any tangible difference to how I'm going to approach my next race, it has made me think about my nutrition even more. It's made me critique my nutrition and see whether there are any parts that could be improved and it's also helped me to practice and tailor my pre-race nutrition too. That in itself is extremely important. 
Of course, you can do all of this without a Super Sapiens patch, but from my experience, it's a lot harder for athletes to want to put into the effort that doesn't really have any substance to it. So things like perceived effort or how do you feel your nutrition went aren't that exciting questions. But looking at watts or heart rate or blood glucose is real. You've got numbers and data that you can look through. It might not always show you helpful stuff, but it makes you analyze it further and try to improve yourself. And if that's the case, then I think that's great. So my conclusion really is that I probably do need a new pair of legs or a motor in my wheel to be able to be faster, but neither of those things are going to happen. So I guess that's that. Now, I'd love to know if any of you have raced with a Super Sapiens monitor and whether you got anything useful from it. So let me know in the comments section if you have. As I mentioned, I did delve into the topic of whether you should eat carbs in the hour before your race in more detail. And I've put that next to me along with another video that you might find useful. These will just help you to nail your training and race nutrition, so give them a watch. Otherwise, have fun with your training and racing and I'll catch you next time.